we live at a time and we live in a world where, you know, the idea that there can be one truth that may have been possible when we were living in small groups, but we live in a world that is connected. We know about these other traditions, these other religions. We know about people on the other side of the globe. And if a religion can't handle the pluralistic reality of our world, the diversity of our world, it can't move us into the future as it actually exists. Religion comes from this root religio. Mm -hmm. To link back. It's not just to link back, but it's to go over again, ah. to reflect again. And so there's the quality of what links us to, to the archetypal depths, to the divine but then there's the going over again, which is the attitude, the thing that we do, the effort that we put in, uh, and the intention that we have. Jung's definition of religion is careful consideration or a careful observation of the irrational facts of experience or of the numinous. It's to pay attention to that dimension of experience not through a, a, a realm of belief, through a realm of fixed ideas, but to be in relationship with that dimension. He says, I, I must know what the church teaches, and then I must find my own way. We, we don't have time to come into contact with all of the possible experiences, uh, all that has been thought and named and known, we just don't have time to do that on our own. And so the, the religions and the wisdom traditions store that knowledge for us, and they, they give us this map for how to understand what we're going through in relationship to how that appears in general for human beings all over the world and of all ages and all times. Uh, there's a great quote from Goethe, which is that, you know, all, uh, all the important thoughts have already been thought. Uh, all that needs to happen is for us to think them again. We need to be wary of any view that attempts to reduce the whole of human existence to just one of its parts for example, just to biology or just to economics. For the whole is always more than the sum of its parts. And though we are certainly biological beings, we are also so much more than that. Science is a, a, an amazingly effective way of knowing. And there are other ways of knowing. Art is a way of knowing. Religion is a way of knowing, um, but they're knowing through different channels. And so anything that is too exclusive, anything that becomes too one-sided, too cut off from a, a full experience of what a human being is, what life is, can't nourish us the way we need to be. The religious outlook is not one of possessing certainty, but one of striving and struggling. It's not about neat or simple answers, but rather asking difficult questions. Wisdom, says the theologian and philosopher Raymond Panikkar, can't be known as long as one is not wrestling with, absorbing, and somehow beginning an intimate interchange with it. In other words, you can't just adopt easy answers. You have to wrestle with the questions. And the poet Rilke agrees. Don't search for answers, he says. And he says this because answers that are arrived at too quickly can't be lived in a meaningful 
or authentic way. And the point is, Rilke goes on, to live everything. Live the questions now. Perhaps then, some day far in the future, you will gradually, without even noticing it, live your way into the answer.